Welcome to Mind Over Matter, where we feature young Jamaicans who are shooting for the stars. I'm your host, Margaret Boyne. The sport of gymnastics is a testament to the human spirit as gymnasts push themselves to the limit to achieve their goals. My guest is a young artistic gymnast. She has represented Great Britain, winning several championships and accolades along the way. However, in 2018, just as she was reaching the peak of her career, she suffered a major injury, which forced her to step away from the sport. After four years of rehabilitation and determination, she decided to make a comeback, switching allegiance to Jamaica. With her sights set on the Olympics, she's determined to make it to the biggest stage of all. She shares her story. My guest is Taisha Mattis. Welcome to Mind Over Matter, Taisha. Hello, how are you? Yeah, man, looking forward to talking to you. I've, I've never had a gymnast um, on the program before. Okay, that's nice. I'm glad to be the first. <laughs> yes. Um, Six-time British champion, two-time English champion, Australian youth champion, and European Youth Olympic medalist. You've had a great career in gymnastics. How did you start and when did you start? Okay, so I started gymnastics when I was three years old. And the reason I got into gymnastics was because my mum was a gymnast. And she put me in it from very, very young because she could see that I was running up and down too much. And she needed to <laughs> put that energy into something. And she didn't think of anything better but gymnastics because that's all she knew as a child as well. Mm -hmm. So you have basically been training all your life. Yeah, I did have a recent four year gap um, before I came back to do it for Jamaica recently. So your mother was a gymnast. Um, you were born in Britain, but your parents are Jamaicans. Um, tell us about mm -hmm. that. So my dad was actually born in Jamaica and he moved over to London when he was 15. And my mom was born in England, but her granddad, her dad, my granddad is Jamaican and her mom is St. Lucian. So my nanny. Okay. Yeah. So how, um, how far did your mother reach? Um, I mean, what level did she reach in gymnastics? She reached the level of being able to actually compete at the Commonwealth Games. Oh, um, okay. Yeah, so she was really good. Um, mm -hmm. I, it's just a shame she couldn't go even further than that because she ended up stopping and, you know, making a family and having her mm -hmm. own life and settling in a different direction. Okay, so you actually love this sport. It's not just mommy pushing your... Um, no yes. but mommy has always been there where I've trained she's always been a coach where I've trained so I've always had her eyes on me in the gym and stuff mm -hmm. but yeah it is my passion because I've done it my whole life mm -hmm. um you're an artistic gymnast no Correct. explain to us what is an artistic gymnast so artistic gymnastics um is when you do the vaults Mm -hmm. The bars, the uneven bars, um, the floor and the beam. I was just going to say for each yes. apparatus, you have to do perform a routine mm -hmm. and it can't be longer than one minute 30. And the vault, it's so quick anyway. You can compete two volts mm -hmm. and each score counts together to put you into a final. But if you do one vault, then you probably won't make a final. Mm, I see. Um, gymnastics require hard work and training. I mean, were you training near your home or did you have to travel? How did that work? Um, to be honest, when I was growing up with my mom, she always drove me to the gym. So she would pick me up from school and drop me straight to gymnastics. Um, and then on Fridays, I would do half days at school from early in life, from at least, yes, Year six, mm. I would um, half school on a Friday so I could do extra hours in the gym. Then I got to year seven and I did three days a week, half school, so I can train mm. more hours. And the school allowed it because I come back with the results. Oh, but um, yeah, I did, um, when I now in the last couple of years, two years have been training for Jamaica now, mm. I've had to travel myself to um, training and it is an hour and a half away because it's the only gym that I have 
nearby that I can train at that is a good gym for me mm. and good people in there that will support my journey um so it is a long journey home mm-hmm. sometimes but it's worth it so so what is your training regimen like um at the moment I train on a Monday evening or Tuesday from about lunchtime to evening and then I go in on a Friday from about lunchtime to evening and then the other days I have to work on a Wednesday, Thursday and a Saturday so I can pay my rent and <laughs> get, get, get my travel, the gymnastics and my little food shopping. But earlier while attending school though, Taisha, how did you balance all of that? Um, when I was at school and training, it was very mm-hmm. difficult. Um, I missed a lot of school growing up. It did affect me in the long run. However, I got away with it in the sense because I had gymnastics to fall back on. Mm -hmm. I did always try to have a plan B, but it wasn't always that easy having a plan B because I needed to dedicate my life to gymnastics if I wanted to be the best. And I just always did that really. So schoolwork always came second and Mm -hmm. studying came second to gymnastics. Mm -hmm. But... I I would have loved to have continued college and stuff and did like I enjoyed cooking at school I enjoyed drama art um PE so I did get to do a qualification in PE and then I went on to college and studied that further and was able to do an NVQ in sports and teaching and coaching Mm-hmm. Um, I did that for one year and then I ended up dropping out of college because it was getting close to the Olympics and I didn't want to jeopardize that but I didn't end up going due to a very serious injury to my ankle so mm-hmm. yeah okay we'll we'll talk about that later but yeah. gymnastics though um Taisha is, is a very expensive sport so how how your parents manage all of that find all Correct. of that money there <laughs> correct um to be honest I don't know um <laughs> my mom worked as a gymnastics coach in the local gym we was at so mm-hmm. the thing is where I did have a lot of help growing up from my gymnastics coach as well mm-hmm. she was um, a very wealthy woman and she has horses and she lives in a very nice built up house that she built from mm-hmm. scratch and mm-hmm. when my mum wasn't able to do certain things for me she was able to help me out a lot her name's Lorraine Atkinson Mm -hmm. and she has been like a second mother to me growing up in my gymnastics career and she did help me learn all my gymnastics skills Mm -hmm. so Mm -hmm. I'm very grateful that I did have someone like that to help me along the way when it did come to traveling and things like this Mm -hmm. but when I got onto the British team everything was funded for me so that helped a lot Mm -hmm. once I did make the top spot at the British Championships I was able for training at uh, training for the Great Britain team mm-hmm. and I was funded to travel anywhere for a competition or my accommodation. I would get a bag this big filled with loads <laughs> of kit. So I never ran out of clothes. I always had loads of merch with Team GB. So I was very grateful that I was on the team and they helped fund everything. Psychologist, yes. So I used to get to speak about like my well-being and my health and things like this. Mm-hmm. I had a nutritionist. Um, so they would help me with my diet and I had a personal fitness coach that would help me with my fitness um, routines and things so I had physio personal physio so everything with injuries was covered I never had to really pay for anything when I did get injuries and surgery so I was very much looked after Mm -hmm. so that's what I was used to and it was very helpful to help me build on my career Mm -hmm. in that sense so I was blessed to have that help mm-hmm. um gymnastics though um taisha is a is a white dominated sport sport um did you experience um or what was it like though were you the only like sometimes the only black training or how did that how did that go i was um, when I was at the national camps, I was pretty much the only black female gymnast there on my team. Um, there are other girls that may be mixed, but I was the only black girl, like Jamaican girl there. So I did stand out quite a lot. 
um, that was something over time I've got to deal with and understand. But it did make me feel a little bit, you know, mm-hmm. different. Yes. Um, mm. But I just got on with it and I never let that um, stop me from reaching my dreams mm-hmm. because it's not about your skin colour so at did, the end of the did, day. Did you experience any racism or anything like that? Um, I won't lie, I did um, mm-hmm. experience certain things that did make me feel very uncomfortable. I don't really need to get into it, right. but yeah. it is just one of them things as a black girl you have to deal with um, in certain environments. Mm-hmm. And I just, nothing went too far to the point where I had to report it, but there were things that did happen behind the scenes that I didn't tell my mom till I left GB mm-hmm. and explained to her certain things that were going on. And there was times where my mum could see that I was being held back mm-hmm. for what reason we didn't know what was going on and why I was being held back but I deserve to be on so many teams but they said we're going to leave you this year we're not going to put you on the team and I just never understood and it happened to me three years in a row and then I said I'm not doing it anymore and I took myself off the national team because I didn't feel like I was being appreciated for mm-hmm. what I was worth. But how do you um, handle these things mentally, though? Because it must Um, um, have had some impact. Yeah, it definitely traumatized me um, for what I went through. That's why I stopped for four years. On top Mm -hmm. of having an injury and having to work really extremely hard to come back to as far as you can to where you was before the injury, Mm -hmm. to then still be told, no, you're not good enough it does knock your confidence and it does make you feel like, why am I even trying anymore? So mm. I did have a lot of mentally mental effects after that. And I just kind of went into a bit of a shell and I didn't want anything to do with gymnastics. I wouldn't talk about gymnastics. I wouldn't do gymnastics. Um, I just completely had to block it out and hide how I was really feeling about mm. the sport. It was at remember. what age were you at that time? I think it was around 13, 14, around that age bracket. Mm. um, You can go into the Mm. S-squads. That's what it calls. It goes s squad, then it goes junior, then senior. So it took me a while to get onto the s squad because I wasn't a very flexible gymnast. And we had to do certain skills that showed off your flexibility Mm. and how strong you are. And that was my weak weak spot is showing flexibility and strength together. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. when it comes to doing three flips in a row, I was more easier at doing those things. So I had to find a balance and just push myself in that area to try and push my way through to make onto the team. But they Mm -hmm. still held me back because I was a scruffy gymnast. Mm -hmm. And it was these are the words that people used to say about me. So it was really hard um, to take that thought out of people's head Mm -hmm. because all I could do was really good tricks, but it might have not been very elegant. So I had my own personal things that I had to work on to make my way onto the team. And eventually I I made the top six and they couldn't not put me on the team. They had to put (laughs) me up there, even though I was still scruffy at the time. Which meant that you had to be better than everybody else. Right. So (laughs) it was one of them ones. I did feel like I pushed my way in a little bit, Mm -hmm. but I made it. And that's all that matters. But I read that you were the first British gymnast to perform a tucked double-double on the floor. Tell me about that. Correct. Um, This was in EOF, um, the European Youth Olympics Festival. I can't remember where it was held now. It was such a long time ago. Mm -hmm. um I can't remember I've been so many places um (laughs) but yeah um so I ran down the the floor and I do a round of flick double back in the air and then I twist two times in the air like this and I land it perfectly and it was just amazing because at the time when I'm growing up I, ne- I understand now how big of a gymnastic skill it is, but back then I didn't think that it was a big, big, big skill. Mm-hmm. And yeah, the value of it all means so much to me now, but, but back then it didn't. It, I just thought it was a really fun skill to do. So I am grateful that I made the history and things mm-hmm. like this. And I can look back and say, wow, I did that. 
and I'm proud of myself. And you, you won several championships um, during your career. Can you tell us a little about some of the, the championships you won? Yeah, um, so I can't remember the years, if I'm honest, but I did become British champion all around. Um, and then I was also British champion again all around twice. And then I also individual apparatus was on the beam. Mm-hmm. British champion I made the bars British champion as well the vault British champion and I know I made a silver medal on the floor champion but there was another year where I got the same scores on all four apparatus mm-hmm. but um you also um had several injuries as well um, yes I have been talk about that a little uh, well growing up because I have done gymnastics for so many years that injuries comes with the sport and I mm-hmm. completely understand that now I'm older but back then it was a thing where I didn't realize why am I getting so injured all the time and it's because I was working so hard and I didn't realize times where I may have been overusing my body mm-hmm. or overworking myself because I was such a hard worker and um yeah my mum was the one that started to tell me to speak up and understand when my body is telling me Mm -hmm. this is hurting or this is wrong maybe tell your coach I was very like quiet if I was in pain or very quiet if something was not feeling good I would just work through it Mm -hmm. I was a very tough baby and um best way to put it (laughs) um next thing I um I had a really bad hamstring injury and Mm -hmm. my mum had to take me to up London these really fancy clinics and they saw that my hamstring was pretty much hanging on a thread Mm -hmm. and I caught it just at the point where I could heal naturally and have it all grow back on and um, that was a wake up call for me because I was on crutches for about half a year. And I realized that I couldn't walk without the crutches. Mm-hmm. Like your hamstring is your, your big bit of your leg, you know? It's a big part of your body. So I just didn't want to jeopardize myself again, but I had to just understand how to deal with injuries the older I got. Mm-hmm. And I've, I've, had, I've had knee injuries as well growing up, but that's through growing and then still doing a lot of tumbling and bank pounding on my knees and stuff it was a big impact and I didn't realize Mm -hmm. until I had like lumps at the front of my knees um where extra bone extra bones were growing through my knees but I got through that and I still pushed through and Mm -hmm. um the worst injury of my career really which put me out was just before Rio 2016 I did my vault which was a double twist in Yuchenko so it's when you run down to the vault you do a round off and then you go back onto the vault mm-hmm. and then you do double twist in the air and land. Mm-hmm. And I um, I twisted my foot on the landing because I was still twisting and I, I snapped my ligament off the bone and um, mm-hmm. I needed keyhole surgery to get it reconstructed. And I chipped bone at the front of my foot as well. So that was a very devastating experience for me um, to deal with. It was my first time ever having a surgery and having to go under anesthetics. So it was hard for my mum to watch me go through that as well. Um, that did put me out a year. Mm-hmm. And I, I was in a boot cast for at least a good six months. And around this time, I had my um, GCSEs at school. <laughs> so <laughs> No, but, but Taisha, you are, um, you are on a beam, it's easy to fall. How do you get back up on a beam after having an injury like that, that put you out for a year? How do you get back up mentally? Um, um, well, I don't know. I just know <laughs> I've got a job to do and I've got to get back to where I was before. And I think I just have the drive. That's what it is. I have the drive and I don't let an injury affects me I think because I've been injured so many times Mm -hmm. I know that I can heal and by the grace of God he always heals me and gives me the blessings to continue and try again and I keep getting a second chance and I'm Mm -hmm. just very grateful um so how do you handle um how do you handle pressure like in competitions um to be honest I I try and just meditate to myself 
um I try not to overthink the situation especially when I know I know what my body can do mm. I have to trust myself and it's all in the mind um I just tell myself I know I can do this and I don't concentrate on what anybody else is doing out there I'm not standing around looking looking too much for everyone else I sit there focus on what I have to do and after that I'm fine mm. but yeah I do feel pressure um I, I had a year where everyone thought I was going to win the British Championships again because I won two years in a row and that was too much pressure for me and I went over there and I fell three times one after the next mm. and it is because my coach was in my ears giving the pressure as well <laughs> and after a while it does become too much you, it will break you mm -hmm. I've had the moments where I do crack under pressure but I think once you've overcome that experience you know how to deal with it the next time and that's just what it comes with experience as well. Mm -hmm. you, you've made um, a lot of sacrifices for this sport, though, um, Taisha. Did, did you miss out on anything? Would you say that you missed out on anything? Did you date? Did you do any of those things? I mean, <laughs> I, would definitely, I would definitely say um, I didn't get to enjoy the dating life growing up. Um, <laughs> or the boys, should I say, <laughs> but um, later on in life that did come. Obviously when I got injured, I was then more open and exposed to mm. things that I wasn't before. Taisha, and then the unthinkable happened. Mm.